the challenge of the Yukon. On, King! On, you husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. John Dorn had built a small cabin near Forty Mile, where he lived with his granddaughter Betty. It was a bright summer day in the Yukon. Betty stopped her housework and went to the open door as she heard wild whoops coming from the direction of the creek. Betty! Betty! Betty, we've stuck it! Grandpa, what's the matter? Gold! Look at it, baby! We hit it at last and we're going to be rich! Oh, Grandpa, how wonderful! <laughs> oh, let me see. Uh, look at them nuggets! Them yellow things mean a good school for you and fine clothes. And I ain't never been so happy. Oh, Grandpa, oh, you better stop hey. jumping around like that. You're going hey. to... Oh, oh. There. Oh. oh, I knew it. Oh, my leg. Oh, Grandpa, are you oh, hurt? Oh, it's my leg. I stepped in that hole. Oh, oh it hurts. Oh, it looks oh. as if it's broken. Oh, what will we do? I'm oh, discovering gold and breaking my leg at the same time. How can I get you back into the cabin? No. Oh, you can't stay yeah, here. Now, don't be nervous, honey. Go get a piece of canvas and put under this leg. I can drag myself into the cabin. We'll have to get somebody uh, to fix it. Oh, after I get into the house, you can run to the village and get help. Oh, my. As Betty hurried toward town for help, she saw two men on the trail that crossed into the forest, and she ran to intercept them. Hey! Hey there! Will you wait a minute, please? I I wonder if you can help me. Help you? What's wrong? My grandfather just broke his leg, and, and we're all alone in our cabin. Could either of you fix it? We don't know how to set bones, kid. Afraid you wouldn't be of much help, kid. How'd he do it? Oh, poor Grandpa. He finally discovered gold, and... And he was so excited that he was leaping around for joy. He stepped in a hole and fell and broke his leg. Discovered gold and broke a leg dancing over it, huh? <laughs> it's not funny. Where do you live, kid? We'd uh, be glad to go and stay with your grandpa till you could get a doctor. Oh, oh, that would be fine. We live about a mile and a half back that way and follow the creek to the right. Oh, thank you very much. That's all right, kid. I'll get back as soon as I can. Bye. Hey, what's the idea? We ain't got time to play nursemaid to an old codger with a busted shin bone. Jake, you're a fool. We're just going to find the claim and file it. There'll be lots of time to see them when they're alone again. Doctors were scarce in the Yukon, but Betty had been fortunate in finding Sergeant Preston of the mounted police who happened to be going through town. Sergeant Preston had just finished biting the splints on old John's leg. Well, there you are, Mr. Dorn. Uh, That's probably not as good a job as a doctor could do, but I think you'll be able to walk on it when it's healed. It isn't a bad break. Oh, the pain's gone anyway. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. I don't know what we'd have done if you hadn't happened to be in the village. Setting a leg ain't easy. I can't understand why those men didn't come here the way they said they would while I went to the village. Oh, they probably didn't intend to come at all. Just had an idea you'd feel better if you thought they was here. What did you tell them, Betty? I just told them what happened. How Gramps was so happy because he discovered gold that he... You you told them that he discovered gold? Yes, I did. Well, maybe we have something to worry about. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I never yeah, thought Oh, it's that... all right, Betty. They probably forgot all about it. It might be wise to get your claim filed as soon as possible, Mr. Dorn. Claim jumping's a favorite pastime here in the Yukon, you but know. But with this leg... I have to catch a boat for Dawson this afternoon. I could drop the papers at the claim office in town on the way and stop when I get back. At least they'll have something for the record. Well, that sure would set my mind at ease, Sergeant. Sorry I can't be around to watch out for you, Mr. Dorn. But I have to appear at a trial. I'll be away for a couple of days. Well, don't you worry about us. 
Betty is very much grown up for her years, and she's been in this territory long enough to know how to take care of herself, and, and me too. There's a chance that those men might make trouble. Well, I ain't exactly helpless. Now that you've got me all fixed up with the splints, I'll make myself a couple of crutches, and I'll be able to get around almost as good as ever. Tell you what I'll do. I don't need King on this trip. I'll leave him here with you. That will give you protection. Oh, I'd love to have him. He's a wonderful dog. King, come on, boy. Come in there. Hi, fella. You're going to be Betty's dog for a couple of days. King never enjoyed life without Preston. They were seldom apart, and the dog's world seemed empty without his master. However, King took an instant liking to this gentle little girl whom Preston had placed in his charge. The morning after Preston left, the dog came to her side immediately when she rushed into the cabin, frightened and breathless. Gramps! Oh, Gramps, I just saw those men. What men? Those men I saw on the trail yesterday. They're down at the creek. On my claim. Did they see you? No. I hid behind some bushes when I saw them. Oh, do you think King could scare them away? Oh, I'm afraid they might shoot him. Maybe if I told them how well you can shoot, how you won all those prizes and everything. Well, with this broken leg, being a good shot don't help much. Maybe I could go to the village for help. Oh, if only Sergeant Preston hadn't gone. <laughs> What's the matter, King? You hear something. Wait, I'll look. There they are. They're trying to get in the shed. Well, you locked it, didn't you? Yes. What do we do if they come in? Uh, are they armed? They both have rifles. Well, now, Betty, I, I don't want you to get hurt. Preston took those papers in for us, so it's our claim. Even if they work it for a few days until the sergeant comes back, it won't hurt nothing. Now, keep King quiet. We're pretty helpless against two armed uh, men, remember? They're coming. Uh, give me my rifle and put my crutches over here, just in case they start something. Quiet, King. It's all right. Oh, hello. Well, it's an ain't our little friend we met the other day. How are you, kid? Well, what do you want? We're just paying a neighborly visit, that's all. Ain't you, ain't you going to ask us in? Y yes. Come in. Hi, uh, is that dog dangerous? You're not with people he likes. This is my grandfather. We uh, thought we'd borrow some of your tools and stuff, you being a prospector. Well, now our pans ain't so good. And uh, we could use a shovel and a wheelbarrow. Where are you planning to use it? And our claim down here near the turn in the creek. Your claim? <laughs> I'm sorry, mister, but I filed that claim yesterday. You did? What time? Yesterday afternoon. <laughs> well, that's just too bad, old timer. We filed ours yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? We uh, found it right after we saw you and uh, filed it right then. What? Why, that's stealing. It's ours, all fair and legal, sister. Now, how about handing over that equipment? You won't need it anymore. Why, you... Did... You can't have any of our things. Get out of here, you... You robbers. Listen, you, don't give us no trouble, see? We can put a bullet through each of you and nobody would know it. It might not be a bad idea to put that dog out of the way right now. Yeah, be quiet, King. Betty... I guess there ain't much we can do. That, uh, that shed you got locked up. Is that where you keep your stuff? Yes. Well, come on out and unlock it for us. And leave that dog in here. We might have to put him away permanently. Oh, Gramps, what? Uh, better go ahead, honey. There ain't much we can do. Now you're talking. Hurry up, kid. Nice shed you got there. Good and strong. Yeah. Maybe we'll come up and move in it until your cabin's empty. <laughs> there. It's open. Well, if this ain't nice. Everything we need. A shovel, some new pans. Now look, there's a sluice box. And a wheelbarrow to carry them in. Come on, Dan, let's load up. Let's get this box first. All right. <laughs> Set her right over here. Hey! Open that door. You're going to stay in there, you coward. You're not going to steal my grandfather's place. Listen, you little fool. We can break this lock. We'll shoot it off. Try it. I've got the gun. Grandpa, Grandpa, I've got one. Come out. Let's see now. 
why that little devil, she took a rifle. Why'd you put yours down for Same it? reason you did, to load the wheelbarrow. Well, if this ain't the... Give me that shovel. Yeah. I'll break out of the side. Here. Guess the door's our best chance. I can't break out of the side of this. It's Bill the Logs. Now, come on. Put your shoulder again here. I'll smack him over the head with a shovel. My grandpa was one of the best shots in Yukon. He's going to be sitting right here waiting for you. You all right, Grant? I'm sitting right here good and comfortable. Just let one of them birds stick his noggin out of that door. <laughs> I've been wanting some target practice. Jake, this is getting serious. Getting? Hey, maybe we can dig our way out of the back. Well, I ain't going to be the first one to stick my head out of no hole. Not with that animal waiting to chew off a couple of years. Maybe when it gets started. Don't could... forget it's June in the Yukon. And it's only dark about three hours. Well, yeah, they got to sleep sometime. If you ask me, I'd say we was in a mess. Thus the long vigil began. Betty fixed a bed of spruce branches beside a fire in front of the shed, where she and her grandfather took turns sleeping. Old John Dorn kept his gun and crutches beside him. King, sleeping close beside the shed, gave an alarm at the slightest noise from within. <laughs> Wake up. They're trying to get that door loose again. Huh? Oh, oh, they are, aren't they? Give me that gun. All right, you varmints. You just try coming out of there. You'll get some hot lead where you need it the most, you blasted bones. <laughs> Digging a hole back there. Maybe if you make a noise in front, I can make it big enough. I ain't had enough sleep. We've been awake all night. Make some noise, I tell you. Just two more shovelfuls and we can get out. Let us out! Let us out! Just two more shovelfuls. Hurry up, let us out! Let us out! Now let's see if I can crawl. Something Christmas! Filling in that hole. I almost stuck my head right in that wolf dog's mouth. I'm filling this hole so he can't get in. When Preston returned to get King, he found two tired but determined people camped beside the shed. King was curled up asleep, but sprang into action when he heard the mouthy step. to see me, eh? Well, what's going on here? Uh, King ain't half as glad to see you as I am. We got two claim jumpers locked up in this shed. How'd you get them in there? I uh, tried to steal all of Graham's mining equipment, and I locked them in the day before yesterday. Well, good for you, Betty. They told me at the claim office that someone had failed your claim before I did. I stopped there on my way back. Uh, the other ones. Now, maybe they got my claim, but they ain't going to use my tools on it. I don't think they have your claim, either. What's that? There's a mining law. If a claim isn't worked for 72 hours, someone else can file on it. You've had these people in here 48 hours, and now I'll arrest them for robbery. Oh, Gramps, how wonderful. Uh, Sergeant, I sure do thank you. If it hadn't been for that dog King of yours, we never could have done it. King was wonderful. He caught them trying to get out about ten times. <laughs> well, old fellow, you certainly did well without me. <laughs> he did well, all right, Sergeant, but he sure is glad you're back. How about that, boy? <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking.